to welcome a man of God, a man that has prepared a word for us that will help us, a man that is ready to do God's will Amen. and is willing. Amen. With his sermon title, Are We Ready? I'll now welcome Brother Jerry Evans. Amen. 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 Church. Okay, Sabbath, Sabbath. 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 I feel like I came up here and everybody just ran. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me? Amen, amen. Right up. Amen. Amen. How are we doing today? Amen. You happy to be here? Ooh. 
Thank you, Lord. I'm coming back to you. Amen, amen. I'm coming back to you. If you guys don't know me by now, if you join on Facebook, my name is Brother Jerry. You guys can hear me properly, right? Amen. If you know me, you know who I am already. Brother Jerry. Amen. So as you know, this is uh this month that passed was evangelism month. Uh, we we had some uh, speakers speak on the, the topic, the church. I'm here to continue that conversation, right? But first let me, as I always do, I do my pledge. I don't have my Bible, but I'm going on to this one right here. There we go. With God and all mankind as my witness, I pledge allegiance to the Holy Trinity and the Bible. I trust God and pray for mountain-moving faith in Jesus Christ. I dedicate my life to the service of God and his teaching in the Bible. I will dwell in his word and contribute to the fulfillment of the Great Commission. By doing so, I will have played my part in the salvation and welfare of the whole human race. So, if you tuned in or you were here, you remember we had four speakers this month. Evangelism Month start Jan uh, started on July 3rd. We heard from Deacon Blackwood, and just to recap some of the stuff that he said, he said, we need workers in the vineyard, right? He said that and he charged members of this church to step up and participate. I remember him saying, you know, we have a Bible study, business meeting, stuff like that. He charged members to step up and participate, get in the offices, help out, because the church needs the members for it to function and keep going. Sister Lewis came up here and she sung her heart out. God bless her soul. I love that lady. She came up here and she sung her heart out. She delivered the word. She said this is the word that, that God put on her heart, right? And she, she, uh, she, uh, she said, we are too worried and have too many burdens. We remember that, remember that? We are worried, we have too many burdens. She said, like Daniel, we are in debt. We're all trapped in debt. But unlike Daniel, we're not trapped with physical lions. We are trapped with lions of pride, uh, not showing love, unforgiveness, hatred, gossip. Right, you remember that? Yes. And I remember her topping it off when she said, we must trust God because nothing it's too hard for him to fix, right? Amen, amen. And we had we had Sister G, Sister G. How you know Sister G? <laughs> Sister G, she she had the floor. Yes, G for gangster. <laughs> no, she's she's my worship gangster for Christ, right? Yes. yes, Sister G, my worship gangster for Christ. She so eloquently spoke on the importance of family, right? She said, "Hatch, match, and dispatch." It's not the only reason that we show up to church anymore, right? right? I can remember I hear her laughing. She remember that one. She said, we are, we are a family. In the church, we are a family, right? And she said, structure is important. Structure is very important. So we must come together and commit and stop being rolling stone. Stop going around, taking some from here, this church, taking from that church, taking from that church. Stop the animosity amongst us, right? And Sister Pusey came and she, she has totally reminded us to focus our attention on God. She said, trust him. She said, search the scripture daily. And she said, find your treasure that comes from God Almighty. Now I'm here as the last speaker on the last day of evangelism month, which coincidentally is the last day of July. My, my intent today is to bring, to bring it all home, to bring it all home. And today my topic that I'm speaking on is, are we ready? That's a question within itself, but I'm going to add to it. I'm going to ask three questions that I'm going to use to speak on today. And the, 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 my three questions are, are we ready to run back 
Are we ready to stand? And are we ready to see God? I know my time is dramatically limited today, but let's get it done. So are we ready to run back? Are we ready to run back? What a question. COVID-19 shut everything down. You know, I, 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 I said it, but I didn't hear a lot of response, but you know, it's okay. COVID-19 shut everything down. Everything was shut down for COVID-19 for a little while, right? And that, was, that wasn't so much the problem that the church was struggling with. The problem became, if you didn't see it, when the church opened back up. The church opened back up and we struggled with getting members to come out to church. If you look around, the same faces that you see, plus or minus a couple, are the same people that came all throughout COVID. When the tapes was on the bench and everything, when you, you had to sit this, the, the distance apart and stuff, same people, right? That's where the problem started, when the church opened up. Why? Why do we have a problem? Maybe it's fear. Why, why don't people want, why, don't, why are people so, they, they don't want to come out to church? What is it? Is it fear of COVID? Is it fear of debt? No. Is it? No? No, but Okay, no, no. Maybe, maybe we spent, we spent so much time at home that we are uh, so comfortable. You know, we rather to stay home than to come here and sit at these, you know, these hard back bench and listen to Brother Jerry speak or listen to, to none of the other speakers speak, right? Maybe we're so comfortable at home, the bed is so comfortable, you can sit at home, you can lay down, prop your foot up, watch it on your TV or on your phone or something, you know? Maybe that's, that's what it is. Maybe, maybe that's the, the comfort. Or, or could it be that we have become a nation of lazy, Laodicean, Believers, lukewarm believers. Could that be what it is? I'm here asking questions today. I'm here asking questions. That if I'm asking the questions, I, if, if when I ask them, I, I, I need you guys. If you can hear me, you can see me on Facebook or wherever it is. If you're here, ask yourself the question. Ask yourself the question. Now, have we become a nation of lazy, lukewarm believers? If that's what it is, or is it that we're so fearful that we can't come out? Huh? So, I need you guys to see something, understand something, that this whole thing is the work of the devil. This is the work of the devil. The devil has some of us scared to the point where we don't want to leave our house. But as, as my sister said, she kind of jumped ahead of my thing. Why are we afraid? Why are we afraid? Don't even answer that. Again, I'm asking questions, but don't answer that. Why are we afraid? As Christians, we trust God. We believe in his resurrection with our whole heart, right? We confess him with our mouth. We worship him. We pray to him. We even say, persecute me for his sake, right? We, be we believe and confess. We just had that devotion this morning. We believe and confess. We believe that he is our shield and he is our protector. Am I the only one that believes this? Somebody say amen, I, unless I'm the only one that believes this though. Amen. Right? Amen. We look to him for help in trouble. And when we even, some of us even say we can't wait to get to heaven and see him. Mm. Mm. Right? So if you, if you can relate to this, if we have this belief, then why are we so afraid? The Bible tells us, don't fear that which, that, 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 that cannot kill the body and the soul. Don't fear that which can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. We must fear God, because why? He could kill body and soul in hell. That's who you're supposed to fear. You're supposed to fear God, not COVID. Fear God, not the devil. One of my favorite psalms, one of my favorite psalms, my wife back then, she probably started saying it already. 
He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In Him I will trust. Come on, somebody. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of pestilence. Am I talking to myself? He said, He shall cover thee. Come on, man. And under his wings thou shalt trust. His truth shall be. So y'all know it. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the power that fly by day, nor for the pestilence, nor for the pestilence, nor for the pestilence, nor for COVID 19. Not for the pestilence, not for COVID-19. Right. That walking in darkness. Not for the destruction that wasted at noonday. What's going on out there? Thousands are falling. Thousands are falling. 10,000 at your right hand. But it shall not come thy ID. Did I say more? Children of God, the devil uses fear as a pivotal part of his attack on Christians. Yes. But remember, you are a friend of God. Amen. And your friend provides 24 hour protection. Amen. You just read it against everything you could think of. Amen. Everything you could think of, he provides protection. Amen. So if you know that Yeshua is protecting you, why are you afraid? Amen. We go to parties. But when it comes to church, we are afraid. We go to work, but when it comes to church, we are afraid. We go shopping in the filthy malls, we eat these terrible restaurants, but when it comes to church, we are afraid. We go to doctor's appointment, but when it comes to church, we are afraid. <laughs> we go to team park, we go bowling with friends, we, we go to friends' house, we do, we do every gathering you can think of. We are there. But when it comes to church, we are afraid. If you leave your house for any reason whatsoever, you have no excuses not to come to church. No excuses at, at, at all not to come to church. If you can't say amen, say ouch. Amen. 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 Pastor, let me ask a question. Are you, are you handing out free COVID? Huh? You giving people COVID for free? Uh, it must be because they, they, I don't know what's going on. People don't want to come out to church. But we know what's going on, though. We know what's going on, though. I need you to hear and understand this next point. The longer we stay away from church, the more we contribute to the devil's plan. Amen, somebody. How? How do we contribute to the devil's plan? I'm glad you asked. The author of Hebrews reminds us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as he see the day approaching. The more we stay away from church, the further we grow from God. We begin to lose our sense of worship or yearning for the word of God and the relationship with him decreases or prior life starts to suffer or prior life starts to suffer if you can relate just say forgive me Lord in, my, in your heart he can hear you then the distractions of the world start creeping in we know what the distractions of the world are they start creeping in some people say Christianity isn't easy, right? And the devil, the devil will stop at nothing to, to condemn you forever with him. But I, I say this to you. Sometimes we bring it upon ourselves. Somebody say, I'll try, amen. <laughs> I want to say this to you. Remember, we are stronger together. Ephesians 4 16, for because of him the whole body closely joined and firmly knit together by the joints and ligaments with which it is supplied. When each part is working properly, 
grow to full maturity, building itself up in love. Amen. Amen. There is something wonderful about the coming together of saints. There is a fire that is built up. There is, there is this, this, this earth, this energy that is built up. And the devil hates it. Spiritual maturity is gained. Spiritual maturity is gained. When a cohesive gospel believing church come together and fellowship together and worship together. Not to mention iron sharpens iron. So you stay at home, isolation. Remember, the devil loves to attack weak, distracted Christians. He would, he, he, you think, you know that the heavens celebrate when a sinner gives themselves to the Lord. Do you know the opposite is true? Do you know the opposite is true? The devil and all his minions celebrate when a Christian slide. The devil celebrates when he can, he can trap one more. So our job is not to allow that to happen. Amen? We can't stand and see that happen, people of God. Don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together. When we stay at home in isolation, we're... we're we're forsaking some vital benefits of coming together as a church. We forsake the church family. We forsake worship. We forsake fellowship. We forsake the coming, the coming together with God. We forsake discipleship. We forsake evangelism. Come on, somebody. These are crucial benefits that the church is needed, especially in these times. In these last days, we need we need a cohesive church. We need a cohesive church. The devil will stop at nothing to stop you from running back. He wants you to tap in. He don't want you to tap into those benefits. He don't want you to come together and worship. He don't want you to get built up. He don't want iron to strong iron. So what? We must resist the devil and watch him flee. Say it. Amen. I will not be captive to fear anymore. Amen. Come on. Say it, somebody. I Say it. Not to fear anymore. Decide to this. In the name of Jesus, I will not be captive to fear. So are we ready to run back against all odds? Are we ready to rebuke the devil and the crippling fear? that he uses to attack. Are we ready to trust God for divine protection? Yes. Turn to your neighbor and ask him, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm looking for my neighbor. <laughs> but just know, when you run back, you will have to stand. You will have, you will have to stand. You have to stand for the truth. You have to stand for the gospel. You have to, sometimes you may even have to stand alone. Sometimes you may even have to stand alone. Which brings me to my next question. Are we ready to stand? Are we ready to stand? Jesus prayed in John 17. The world hates us because we are not of the world. Even as he is not of the world, he prayed for us not to be taken from this world, this dark world, but that God keep us from the evil that's in this world. Some, some versions say the evil one. Right? People of God, here it is. There will be a time when we will want to go to church and camp. A time where we will want to sing praises and worship, but can't. A time where churches, Bible, religious books, everything that says anything about Christ will be forbidden and burnt. Come on, somebody. A time where Christians will be brutally beaten to death. And, and I tell you something, the nation of people that we are right now, they're so desensitized that 
Nobody would even bat the eye. Huh? They're going to see people just dying in the streets and they're going to be like, okay. Sister Grace said it last. She saw some, some, a, a couple or whatever you call it and she said something to a, a young lady and the young lady kind of turned her nose up at her like, what? What are you talking about? But the young lady was by us one day and I was talking to her and something, a commercial came on about you know, this LGBTQ stuff. And you know, if you don't realize, and I get kind of somber, if you don't realize it's a part of the conditioning, the little subliminal messages, the little here and there, you see this, you see that, right? So we gotta guard our children. We gotta guard ourselves, right? So the young lady came to the house and something came on the TV. And my, little, my daughter was there. My daughter's like, oh my goodness. And the little girl said, oh, you don't like that stuff? She said, she looked at her confused, looked like, no. And the little girl, you know, I heard that and I, you know, immediately I said to her, like, hey, what do you know about that? How do you feel about that? And that little girl said something to me that broke my heart. She said that, that is the way of life. Full stop. Wow. We have to guard our children. She was like what? 10, 11? Something like that? She said, that is the way of life. You don't know who you are until you get to a certain age and you pick. We have to guard our children. People of God, we have to, first of all, to, to be able to guard our children, we have to guard ourselves. We have to stay prayed up. Amen, somebody. We're living in a time where abomination, according to the Bible, is being glorified. Abomination. What abomination? Romans 1, 26 and 27. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the women, burning their lust one towards another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meant. Luke 16, 15, and he said unto them, ye are they which justly justify yourself before men, but God knoweth your hearts, for that which is highly esteemed amongst men is abomination in the sight of God. Giving you a scope what is considered abomination according to the, the good book. Jeremiah 7, 8 to 10. Behold, he trusted lying words that cannot profit. Would he steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense unto Baal, and walk after other gods whom he know not, and come and stand before me in the house which is called by my name and say we are delivered to do all these abominations hypocrites that's an abomination brothers and sisters open your eyes those abominations are rampant in the world today we are living in the last days pray not stop for your children pray not stop for your spouses Pray not stop for your, your religious leaders. Amen. Pray for your household. Yes. We're living in a time yes. governed by the devil's doctrine. Yes. If you are on the path that bring about any of the following fruits, you are following the doctrine of the devil. Know that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. One. Vicious. Two. 
Boasters, three. Proud, four. Blasphemers, five. Disobedient to parents, six. Untactful, unholy, seven, eight. Unholy fruits of the doctrine of the devil. That's what those are. Everywhere you turn today, you see sex and drugs, nakedness, homosexuality, hatred, sexual immorality. Yeah. And the, 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 my favorite, people on the phone, oh, look at me, 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 look at me. And they stick their, their barrier out, look at me, look at this. All about them. There's no part of God. There's no thought of the future. There's no thought of what tomorrow holds. All about them being conceited. That's the devil's doctrine. Verse 3. Without natural affection. What was that? 9? That's 10. Truth breakers. False accusers. Incontinent. Fierce. Despisers of those that are good. Is that 15? 15. People of God, they hate us because we love God. They hate us because we hate their sin. Yes. Don't get me wrong. We all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, right? Yes. Right? Amen. So how am I different from? How are we different from the other ones? We opened our heart to Christ and we received true salvation. The truly saved will grow spiritually and attain spiritual maturity. By their fruits you shall know them. Not these fruits. If you want to find the fruits I'm talking about, see Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Those are the fruits that I'm talking about. Verse 5 to 7. Traitors, 16. Petty, high-minded, 17, 18. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And he tops it off with, from such, turn away. Turn away from wickedness. Turn away from abominations. Turn away from false teaching. Turn away from all that is in the world. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Turn away. Turn away. Come back. Come back. Verse 6 to 7. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captivity, silly woman laden with sin, led away with diverse lusts, ever yearning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. Educated fools. They go, they, they, they go up there and they, they know so much, but they know nothing. They know nothing. Blind leaders leading the blind. And let me, let me, let me say something, right? Our young people in this church, we need to cover them. So are we ready to stand? Are we ready to stand? Yep. When the enemy comes for your family, are you ready to stand? Yep. When the enemy comes for your worship, are you ready to stand? Yep. When the enemy comes for your children, are you ready to stand? Yes, Lord. I, Lord. Lord. We have lost and we're, we, we, I feel like we're, we, we're about to lose if we don't if we don't get our act together, we're gonna lose some, some of the youth from this church. Because they're going out there to go to college and they're, they're doing all this stuff. But if we're not speaking to them and praying over them and keeping them positive reinforcements, we're gonna lose them. We are gonna lose them. See, the world looks more attractive than the church right now, right? No? To us it don't. To us it don't. To the young people. Oh, it looks beautiful. It looks beautiful. I was 
I was gonna say I was one of them. That means I'm saying that I'm older and I'm old. You know, let's not even go there. But <laughs> right? We see the, the world is attractive. But one thing I want to implore us not to do, don't change the church to reflect the world. And I say it and I see the looks. But believe it or not, that's what churches are doing. That's the doctrine of the devil. You change the church to reflect the world. You accept, you accept, and you accept. But acceptance is not love. Come on, somebody. Acceptance is not love. I love you, but I hate your sin. Oh, Brother Jerry, the church judge too much. The church too judgy, judge. I don't want to go to the church. They judge, judge too much. Huh? The Bible tells us to be righteous judges. Amen? Amen. <laughs> so are we ready to stand? <sighs> the truth, the church must stand against the tyranny that the devil is bringing. We must stand against this, this devil. We must stand for the gospel. We must put on the armor of God and go to war. Visit Ephesians 6. We must put on the armor of God and go to war. If we don't come together in love and unity, we cannot stand. A nation divided amongst itself shall not stand. That's right. Amen. Amen. We put on our clothes and we go to church and we say we are Christian, that we are called by his name, and we have so much animosity amongst us. A nation that is divided amongst itself shall not stand. Let, let, let me enlighten you with something. You didn't realize the devil had COVID-19 kick in and everything shut down. He had from that time all the way until now. Why? He had all that time that he was just enjoying the time. No Christians coming together. They're struggling to, to pray. They're struggling to worship. The only defense against the devil is what? Amen. And who are praying people? People of God. If we don't come together and pray. So the devil is just over here just enjoying his freedom. Just tearing down Christians. Tearing down homes. He had that whole year to plan. He had that whole year to plan and then the, 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 you know, the plan of the devil is to tear down the, the bride of Christ. And then, one by one, take each of us into the lake of fire with him. But I ask again, are we ready to stand? Yes. Now is not the time to stay home from church. Now is not the time to be at home in fear. God, God knew this was coming. He said, men's heart failed them because of fear. Looking for these things which are coming on the earth. Men's heart failed them because of fear. We sit there and we read the Bible and the Bible says 666 is coming. The Antichrist is coming. And we sit here and we are looking for this and we are looking for all the signs that says this is coming. And we sit there and we we'll become fearful instead of getting ready, for the battle. getting ready, my sister. We sit at home in fear. Hmm? Now is the time to pray. Put on the armor of God and go to war in the name of Jesus. Praying always with all prayer. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching their answer with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. 
For which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. That I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. We must speak boldly for the gospel. We must speak boldly for God. We, we, we will be standing alone at points, feeling like we're on an island alone. But even then, we must feel boldly. We must speak boldly. Stephen was alone. He was alone when he was speaking. The first martyr. And they stoned him to death. And he looked up and he saw Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Forgive them. Forgive them. Don't put this on their charge. Forgive them. That's where we're headed. That is where we're headed. If you don't realize it, that is where we're headed. The Bible says, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption joy nigh. Your redemption joy nigh. My third question. Are we ready to see God? Are we ready to see God? Again, I ask a question. You ask yourself that question. But then when you say, or oh, am I ready to see God? You add to it. In the state that I am in right now, am I ready to see God? Revelation chapter 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new hurt. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of the heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of the heaven saying, Behold, behold, the tabernacle of God is with man, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them. And be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. I remember I, 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 I uh, brought the word at Psalm 91. And I was thinking like, you know, he dwells in the secret place of the Most High, that secret place, you know. And I'm, I'm like, you know, what can I, what can I use? as an illustration for this, this secret place, right? And as I'm there, I looked down and I saw my son's little table. And I said, wow, I imagine this secret place is like this little table with two little chairs. As big as I am, I'm sitting on this little chair under this little table. And God is, Jesus, God, is sitting right there, our knees bumping on each other. And just fellowshipping with him. Just basking in his glory. Just me and him. Just enjoying each other's company. Amen. 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 Just put yourself in that chair Amen. next to him. Hallelujah. What questions he will have. Amen. Oh my God. Hallelujah. What things we will ask him. Imagine the stories that he has. The stuff that happened in this world that we never saw. Imagine how awesome that day will be. Amen? Amen. Amen. Just imagine sitting there with your knees rubbing and he's just touching your hand saying, well done. Well done, oh good and faithful servant. Well done. Here's your crown. Enjoy, enjoy the bounty of my grace. And the angels are rejoicing. Just imagine, the angels are rejoicing, saying, Holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty. Oh my God. And you just sit there and you're shaking because you're sitting in front of God. 
you're just shaking and you don't know what to do or you don't know what to say. You're so nervous because you're in the presence of God. You kick your shoes off because where you're standing is holy ground. Oh my God, we are, this day is going to be a marvelous day. A day of worship, oh God Almighty. What a day it will be. Angels will bow. Heaven and earth will sing. No more tears. No more death. No more suffering. No more pain. No. Oh my God. His people will live with him for eternity. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Because without the blood of Jesus, that wouldn't be possible. Somebody say amen. The devil and his followers. The devil and his followers of his doctrine. Don't think they are left out. Don't, don't think they are left out. I don't know about you, but I don't want to go in the fire. I'm looking forward for New Jerusalem and that crown. I can't wait to wear that crown. I don't care if I'm bald, if I got a nice flow of hair. I, I can't wait to wear that crown. If that crown is 100 pounds, I'm putting it on my head. I, I want that crown. I'm yearning for that crown. I'm hungry for that crown. Are you hungry for that crown? Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Paul proclaimed, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Ha! Which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. Not me only. Everyone. Everyone that loves his appearance. Everyone that is called by his name. That is truly saved. That put in the work. That suffer for his name. Everyone will receive that crown of life. The songwriter writes, We shall have a grand time up in heaven. Y'all know. We shall have a grand time up in heaven. Have a grand time. Walking in the angels. Your reward will be the lake of fire. 
Rejoice, O oh young man, in, in thy youth. Let thy heart cheer thee. I was one of them. In the things of thy youth, let your heart cheer thee. And walk in the ways of thine heart. And in the sight of thine eyes. But no! That's where it turns. No, okay. Walk, have fun. Enjoy your life. Go, enjoy your life. Go. Have fun. Have enjoy the desires of your heart. But some people don't want to hear that. But they want to. They want to say, you know what? God is telling me to go enjoy my life. I'm a young man. I'm gonna go out there and run around and have party. What you talking about? The Bible tells me that I could go and have fun. Huh? Misquoting the Bible. They forget the but. But know that for all these things, God will bring thee into judgment. Amen. 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 You will have to give account for the ways of your heart. He's not going to call mommy and say, Mommy, what, what, what did your son do? He's not going to call daddy and ask daddy. No uncle, no aunt, no sister, nobody. Everyone. And, and something that my mom was, used to say is every 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 part of the story about it won't matter. Huh? If that was ever true, yes. it's true in that statement. Yes. Huh? Yes. You will have to give account for your actions. You will have to give account for your thoughts. You will have to give account for whatever you have done. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yes. In Sabbath school. This morning, Paul reminds us about the simplicity of receiving salvation. How simple is it, huh? Mm-hmm. Romans 10, 9. Confess. Believe. One, two, three. Confess. Believe. And you will be saved. But don't get it wrong. Don't, get me, don't, don't be fooled, though. When you receive true salvation because you truly confess, and because you truly believe, change will come. If it's not true, if it's not coming from a place of brokenness, if it's not, it's, and again, don't get me wrong, I, I, I pull that back. It doesn't have to come from a place of brokenness, but it has to come from a place of humility. I have done something wrong. God, forgive me. Forgive me, Lord, for I have sinned. Confess. Confess the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in your heart and confess. So I ask again, are we ready to see God? In conclusion, with this, I conclude with this. Death by COVID or any other means can't stop you from seeing Christ if you are right with God. Come on, somebody. Everyone wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Huh? Do they, they, they don't want to die because they're not living right? That's what it is? Not after that. They fear that if they die right now, they're not, they're not ready. They're not ready. Are we ready? That's the question. Are we ready? The devil himself, a piece of garbage, I can't stand him. <laughs> not even him can stop you from seeing New Jerusalem. He can't stop you from seeing the face of God. He can't stop you from that worship if you are right with God. Nothing or no one cannot stop you from getting the crown of life. From getting, oh my goodness, from going there and sitting at that table with God. If you are right with God. If you are right with him, nothing can stop you from seeing his face. Jesus told his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him take up his Deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Deny yourself, take up your cross, follow me. 
Young man, enjoy the bounties of your heart, but you will have to give account for it. So, take up your cross. Take up your cross and follow him. Deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow him. He, he warns them, he that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Are you worthy of Christ today? If you are not worthy, you can change that today. You got a head start. If you're on Facebook, the water is troubled. You got a head start. You saw them just lay the, the, the white carpet out. You got a head start. Come. Today is baptism. If you are not worthy because you're following the doctrine of the devil, come. Come. The water is troubled. Today is your opportunity to change the trajectory of your life. Today is your day to give your life to Christ. If you haven't accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, the time is now. If you're sitting out there and, or you can hear my voice on Facebook, again, Facebook, if you're there, come. Come. Don't wait any longer. The harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, if you hear him right now talking, if you hear him right now speaking to your heart, let him in. He's out there knocking. If you hear his voice, open the door. He will come in unto you. You will sup with him, and he will sup with you. So I beg you, open the door of your heart. Let him in, because he's knocking. So if you're, if you're here and you see the water and there's a tugging on your heart and there's a voice in your head saying, today is the day, but you keep making excuses, I don't have no clothes if, it, if what I'm wearing gets wet. You, you, you got them, right, Pastor? Mm -hmm. They got something for you to put on. So come, get in that water. So let's run to the church. Run to the church and get in the troubled water. Make your calling and election sure. Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing unto God. The enemy's plan is in full effect. And if your answer to any of the questions today are no, they come and change it. So again I ask, are you ready to run back? Are you ready to stand? 